Hello, I'm Peter Bell, and I'm here with Mr. Javier Arduna of Aton Resources. Hello, Javi. Yeah, hi, Peter. Uh, how are you doing? Very well, thanks. Nice to be talking to you in December 2019. I gather there's news out from the company regarding Semna East. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 an area we haven't talked about, um, but uh, we've we've been doing a bit of work on it this year. So, so yeah, it it's uh, it looks pretty interesting. It's something we've been working up over the last couple of years, and again, it's it's another area where nothing's been known about, uh, nothing's ever been uh, re recorded, and again, it's, it's it's another area that's pretty interesting for us. Yeah, wonderful. With the the history at the Semna mine there nearby, some evidence of high grade gold mining there. Yeah, well, we're we're in a pretty hot area at Semna East. You know, we're about four kilometres from the old British mine at Semna, which was which was mined about hundred years ago, and. Uh, Perhaps more interestingly, from our perspective, we're right on the northern edge of a Gacharish granite, which is a, which which is a really fairly fascinating sort of a granitoid, granitoid late younger granite uh, intrusive unit into the sequence. So, so that's that's uh, I think is probably the main interest. But uh, it's it's a very hot area, and wonderful. Uh, there's plenty of mineralization all through that central area for license. It's that there, it's a. I think back to years ago where we talked about the 2017 and the regional program, the way there was a few trends, different kind of regional structures coming together around this Semna um, location. I wonder any new thinking on some of the regional geology? Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we haven't perhaps moved on. <laughs> specifically believe believe it or not although you probably don't believe it after you know for the last year we've really been focused predominantly on on rod ruin in, in, in the last two years um you know we've we've kind of for a number of reasons gone back to finalizing i suppose some of the regional exploration um as we approach the end of the exploration phase of the license um we've gone back to you know really finalizing our review of a whole concession area in terms of what we want to keep as and when the exploration license uh comes to it comes to its end and uh yeah so we've been revisiting some areas but uh, in terms of really trying to pull the geology together in some of these more complex areas no we haven't specifically been trying to do that now fair enough it's amazing to go back to that news release and see um semna east mentioned at the same time as eridaya and and that was the early days of the rod ruin discovery there. And so to think that Semna has been kind of on hold since then, and what could be waiting for you? Yeah, well, if you, if you recall, in 2016, we uh, we um, hired a consultant, Mickey Brown from the UK, and he did a Landsat Aster uh, um, remote spectering and, and spectral compilation of, of the license area. In terms of, let me just bring up your, some of the anomalies if I can find them. So he 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 did this uh, spectral survey, and uh, you know identified a number of anomalous areas which which we were working our way through. So they just just come up there in red. I don't know if you can see them. Yes, we can. And, and as I say, you know we started a, a uh, you know a regional evaluation of a whole license area, and you know obviously we went to places like Wire in the early days and Sabakis and. Uh, you know, some of the fairly obvious ones. And of course, at the end of 2017, almost well, just over two years ago, we found Rod Ruin, which which uh, really, you know, sucked up most of most of our time and and and, and still does. <laughs> um, but we we worked up a whole number of other areas of interest. And, and one of them was was a seminar east. And it, it wasn't, you know, a top a top priority target at the time. Uh, we went and we walked it over and we had we had a look at it. We didn't talk about it at the time. It was, uh, you know, it was just part of the regional evaluation. We visited a lot of the areas and we've been coming and going and, and uh, you know, coming and going back to it over the last couple of years on a fairly, uh, you know, fairly low level kind of way, I suppose. But, uh, but you yeah. know, now we've we've completed some more work there in the last few months, which has brought us to the stage where we're at now. And the other thing we did uh, last year, we collected a bunch of whole bunch of uh, petrographic samples from uh, you know eight or nine different areas over the license, which we sent off for whole rock and trace element geochemical analysis. 
and petrography, which Tim did in the UK to try and actually get an idea of, of what some of these rock types were. We were looking at specifically the granites and uh, to feed into our geological thinking about what we were looking at various prospects. And, and we're now at a phase where, where we've collated all this together and, and uh, hence, you know, hence we've worked up what we think is a very uh, another another very interesting target at Seminar East, which is an intrusive related target. Glad to hear about the thin sections and all that. Thank you for doing that. Uh, much appreciated technical work. It was interesting to hear the word cryptic uh, gold fingerprint uh, mentioned there. Yeah, we did, I mean, just to go back to Seminar East, uh, let's talk specifically about Seminar East. Um, the thing that I guess the thing that first brought us in was uh, Mickey's anomaly. It's I don't know if you can see it here. Roughly yep. striking northeast, southwest through the middle of a shot there, highlighted in red. And that was an anomaly which he highlighted. Now it turns out, I'll just get rid of that, that that is actually the Felsic Dyke, which we mention we mentioned in, in in the release. And let's come back to it here. So we come back if you can see my mouse. It basically runs up the edge of the granite. It yep. comes up through here. And uh, I'll try to restrain myself from pointing at the screen, which I always do when I'm doing this, because that's not much use to you or anyone else. But uh, but it's, it's this sort of pinkish pinkish dike, which was what brought us in at first. Um, that was what was producing the clay iron anomaly. Plus, of course, we were working around Semna, sort of Sem Semna, the old British British mine is, it is up here. Yep. Let me also just switch to an older image, actually. It's a slightly better one. So there's a yeah. British mine. You can see, you can see the workings quite clearly. This area in here is the old tailing. So it was an area of interest. And uh, again, just to talk about some of the things we see in the side waddies, again, you can see lots of old houses at, at Semna. But what we're talking about here, these are these are what you can see here. These pits in the wadi sediments. These are actually ancient alluvial workings. Amazing. These, these ones through here. So we got lines of houses right on the edges of the wadis, but more significantly for what I'm going to come on to talk to is through here, you see the actual alluvial workings. So that, that's Sevna, and Sevna obviously is an area of great interest, which we will be returning to. So we came down, we were looking at looking at the uh, spectral anomaly, which turned out to be a dike. But as we did some more work around here, we started mm. having a, a close look around, and of course we went back to Google Earth and satellite imagery, and uh, we started seeing quite a bit of uh, alluvial workings on the satellite imagery as well, which was a bit of a surprise. Yeah. Say so, uh, if I can find some again. I think they're up, up to the northwest. Oh yeah, there you go. Well spotted. Yeah. So what you actually see in, in the younger channels within these wadis, you can see this grey sort of the grey channels. Uh, the lysa gray these are the younger channels and they're the active channels which have you know been active sort of which are not currently active of course but uh, active over a period of 100 years where you get runoff but what you get is these old terrace gravels which probably date back thousands of years so you're probably going back to a sort of new kingdom sort of maybe 3,000 year old but what you're seeing is these these workings are possibly 3,000 years old these these are uh, alluvial workings wow so we started we started looking around and uh yep. you know there's there's quite a there's quite a you know there's quite a few around the area i won't try and find them all but uh yep. we've we found a few but the, the point is obviously if 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 you're seeing alluvial workings then there has to be well <laughs> normally normally there is a primary source primary bedrock source of the gold so this is what lured us into the area it was Initially. wonderful in that news release to have you mark out all the different alluvial areas at first I, I i had to do a double take and look again at how extensive they were i didn't realize there were so many in in around here well what was interesting we then we actually went back and uh i got my map in there my map in face closed um uh we then we then as part of a follow-up to the remote sensing survey in 2017 january when the skies are clear in the middle of winter, we acquired some Worldview Three high-resolution imagery over yeah. over the uh, Seminar up to Abu Marawa area. And when we went looked back at that, and we got quite a surprise. And 
we saw a lot of much more modern sort of alluvial workings which we hadn't spotted before so you can go you can go to some places where are we again there's, there's more ancient alluvials in here amazing if you, if you, if you look around you could you got to find the old the older workings but i think if we go up some of these wadis again more patches again you wow. see the you see the terrace gravels yeah Again, all up on the sides where they haven't been washed out in the more recent recent channels. Plenty of plenty of alluvial workings. But if we if if we go back, and as I say, when we went uh, when we got the um, Wellview Free imagery in 2017, we had a look at that, and we saw something which we hadn't seen before, which was a whole bunch of modern workings. And uh, you know, a lot of a lot of these wadis, not on not on this image. This is this image is going back. Uh, this is 2010 image, but since then, so not all of them. But people have been in there in, in really you know, the last 10 or 20 years, and a really? lot of this area has been extensively worked over with bulldozers. Wow. Again, and again, yet more. Again, you see these terraces in here, all up in here, all up in there, more alluvial alluvial workings. So anyway, that's, that's basically what's in the press release. Uh, modern workings ancient alluvial workings and a lot more modern workings now some of it probably most of it predates you know um, when Alexander Nubia as we were took over the concession but I suspect a fair bit of it has been going on in the last you know 10 years as well while we've actually held the license and people have been operating illegally on this ground without us knowing about it amazing and probably and probably yeah, it's unfortunate, but and probably a lot of it happened during the revolution when yeah. uh, obviously there was a lot of uh, a lot of stuff, shall we say, going on in Egypt. So, well, so and anyway, I wonder anyway, this, this, this is with what, all the this is what with all the high grade gold that would be, you know, pre presumably the source for those alluvial gold deposits, right? Um, where is it in the sampling, too? Right? Is it? I wonder how the alluvial stuff fits with the kind of cryptic gold that you have seen in these sampling grab samples. Well, that, I mean, that, that's a question, of course, Peter. That's, that's, that's the interesting thing. Now, in our license areas, you're aware there's a lot of ancient workings around the place, and we can go around and we can find a lot of ancient workings, but there aren't any. You know, there, there aren't any here at Semner East. It's, it's not an area where there's any recorded workings. We've been over... You know, Google Earth imagery we've got is great here. It's very high resolution, and you can see a lot of stuff. Uh, but there is not there is not a lot out there. We come down yeah. here just on the south side of the Wadi. There's a there's a working in here. There's a there's a quartz vein in there. You can see that quartz vein in there, and that's been that's been excavated. Now we've sampled it, and we didn't get any gold out of it. But again, there's Again, again, there's evidence. Look, if you see down there, there's er evidence of alluvial workings in the in the terraces down here. <laughs> um, but the thing is, at Semner East, in contrast to a lot of the other areas where the ancient workings are, you know, fairly easy to identify, they're not here, yeah. and uh, you know, there's very little evidence of you know ancient mining activity. There's a few scratchings. Uh, a few scratchings here and there, but but normally, you know, like at Safaga say if we went out, we could see sort of old workings, you know, from a satellite imagery, and we could go out, we could go and find them on the ground and sample them. Whereas at, at Semner East, you don't have that. You know, you've got fairly, you know, you know, a lot of this stuff. There ain't a lot. There ain't a lot of stuff up there. But we've no. we've been out and uh, again another area, sort of again more alluvials up through here. Well, and some of the, you know, looking at the results, the one of the highest grade grabs was up on one of these ridge lines in an area with pretty sparse coverage. And then, you know, in the area where you had a lot more dense coverage, a bunch of, you know, low readings. And I guess there's a bit of mystery still here. Yeah, well, it's, it, it's not straightforward. I mean, we went out, we walked over, as I say, the, the you know, the field guys, uh, um, Paul and uh, Paul and all, all the lads they went out and uh, you know they walked over as much of the ground as possible it's not too bad down here it's 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 uh, fairly flat and undulating which is one of the good thing about these basement granites they're not as steep as rugged as some other areas so they walked over it reasonably but there was not a lot frankly to see um, you know there was a few narrow veins there was patches of you know 
you know, the rocks are all heavily altered, which we confirmed in the fin section work. You know, you could see the, uh, the rocks were very heavily sorceritized, which was reflected in what we saw on the ground. Um, but there wasn't a lot, frankly, of evidence. So, you know, clearly we believe that there is primary gold which is feeding into the wadis. You know, it's pretty extensive, these these uh, these alluvial, alluvial workings and covering a large area. And one of the reasons we did a lot of work in the northeastern part of Samaris was because there was a lot of alluvial workings up there. So maybe yeah. we only concentrated on sampling up there and, and uh, you know, we didn't really get much. But... What we did, obviously, was come back down to the southeastern area, uh, down in this area down here. Again, it's you know when you look at it, there's really not that much to see, frankly. Um, but that was that was where we got uh, our yeah. best sample grades, and uh, yeah, and yeah, a lot of it was very narrow, sort of um, you know very narrow veins. But you know that is the nature of often of intrusive related sort of gold deposits you know that they're, they're not big quartz veins they're fairly sort of cryptic style of mineralization the veins you know maybe if they're there maybe millimeters wide now we've got a sheeted vein system at Sabacus, which which we've talked about before which looks very much like an ir type sheeted vein system whereas here we see occasional you know stock worky type uh, zones and uh, sheeted veins, sort of narrow sort of areas of sheet, but there's there's really not a lot to see. So, so you know, but we Amazing. we again we keep coming back to ask ourselves the question: What is it, and why is it feeding into uh, into these into these wadis? And it's we don't see that you know that uh, really that amount of you know density of alluvial workings on our license area any, anywhere else so there's something there there's a reason why they're wonderful there. i love it yeah thank you very much and then the carbonate up to the northwest uh <laughs> an interesting one again and mention of some uh, some nickel yeah um geochemically I mean, that's, anomalous that's i guess yeah that's a different story uh, the carbonate is here. It's this, it's this big sort of tan, sort of tan, sort of coloured unit there. It's pretty big. Um, again, if we go back to Rod Ruin story, as we talked about, we'd visited a lot of these carbonates over our license area. This is probably a pretty big one uh, compared to most of them. You know, we'd looked at a lot of them, and pretty much, frankly, they all look sort of boring. We then finally got over to Rod Ruin, and clearly that one was not boring, and that one's uh, pretty well mineralised. So. <laughs> So that again refocused our minds on what we should be looking back. So we went we went back to this one, and uh, you know we walked over it. We found some you know Gossner's patches. There are sort of Gossner's patches within it. So we 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 took twenty nine thirty samples there. Not not a lot, but but a few to test some ideas out. And and most of them, most of them came back unmineralized. But there are there are sniffs of uh, the base metals. There's you know there's three and a half grams gold in one of them. There's you know there's up to ten grams silver. So there is precious metals there, and there's anomalous copper and copper and zinc in a few samples. So so there's something there. There's a, there's a bit of smoke, but it, it it's not going to be a high priority target. As I, as I mentioned, they're very elevated in 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 nickel and chromium. You know, you're up over 2,000 ppm, pretty much all the samples. And that is very indicative of an ultramafic source for these carbonates. Now, this is what we've said for a long time, but we think a lot of these are sort of sweats and blows out of the ophiolytic slabs, uh, the ultramafic rocks, and we've got ultramafic talc shifts adjacent to this carbonate. So we think a lot of these carbonates are derived from these ophiolytic rocks and and clearly that's the case here where you've got such high nickel and chromium values. The difference is when you go back to say Hamama, of course, and 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 Rod and Rod Ruin, you know, you've got a very different gen uh, uh, genesis for carbonates there. Really? Even Rod Ruin to this one, <clears throat> you know, the other they seem like they're kind of the other side of what might be that intrusive area down below Semna East there, but potentially different sources you're thinking? Well, they look similar, uh, but I don't think they are. I mean, we still, we still, you know, we still, you know, we're moving towards a mining license at Hamama and we're still not sure, uh, you know, we're still not sure what the uh, nature, nature of a carbonate is, frankly. Uh, I, I'm still, 
Uh, I'm still of the opinion that it's replacing, you know, the original Atom team, Alexander Nubia team, believed it was an exhalative, exhalative car- carbonate. Uh, the current team is, is, is not of that opinion. Um, you know, we've had some uh, PhD guys out looking at it who are suggesting it's of sedimentary origin. Now, that's possible because we believe we're in a shallow, you know, almost emergent sort of environment, but it doesn't seem likely because, it, you know, I don't, it doesn't seem to be, the depositional environment doesn't seem to be quiet enough to have a big thick sort of layer of carbonate uh, deposited at Hamama, so we don't think that's what it is. So, yeah. again, the, the nature of these carbonates is, is a bit mysterious, but you do see a lot of these things throughout the whole of the eastern desert in Egypt, and a lot of them like this one. Are clearly related to these uh, slabs of uh, ophiolitic ultra matrix. Hmm. Wonderful, thank you. And yep. and the the geophysics was that was that here or was that at another one where you guys had the radar and all? Uh, we did the radar in two thousand seventeen. Uh, we did some. We did some at Semna. Okay. If if, if we zoom into Semna. Uh, the main mineralization at, at Semna, there's, there's four veins. Um, there's four veins, one in the south here. Uh, the main vein is this one, which represents probably the main underground workings. There's another one to the north. And uh, I think this is the fourth one here. So what we were looking for, you know, this is the main vein, which was worked underground by the Brits 100 years ago. And uh, what we were doing was north-south lines and what we were looking for was potential voids, which weren't necessarily exposed at Semna. Um, we discovered here, we we did discover, um, you know, there's certainly anomalies that need to be followed up, which we will, we will follow up. And uh, that was one place where we did radar. And of course, we did radar down at Abu Gakharish, and Abu Gakharish is quite significant because that ties into what we're looking at here at Semna East and why we think it's a possible IR target. So Abu Gakharish is down here. It was one of my, it's one of my favorite little areas actually, Abu Gakharish, because we discovered it. If you look here, I don't know if you can see. Yep. You can see these ancient workings and you can see these wonderful, beautiful sort of sigmoidal sort of, sigmoidal sort of ancient workings. There's another one down here. Now this is where I am. So. What you can imagine is you've got a shear structure which runs sort of northeast, something like that. I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer going up and down, something yep. like that. So you've got boundary structures. And then in between it, you've got these sort of reed or shear type structures like ladder veins sort of in, in, in between them. So, so clearly a structurally hosted deposit, but it's very interesting because it does have these uh, tungsten and bismuth affinities and very indicative of... Uh, potential intrusion related mineralization as you can yeah. see yeah. we zoom back in again you can see the ancient villages here again the ancient houses and we've got this very interesting granite the Gacharish granite you can see in from satellite imagery it's got a very knobbly sort of profile which is what we tend to call it again through the center of the image right through here again veins possibly these sort of boundary structures with the ladders sort of running down so you've got this uh and it's right, you can see, it's right on the edge of the granite. So we've got the granite to the west, and here we've got green sort of metavolcanics, metavolcanics to be, so we've got structure right on the edge of this uh, very evolved granite. And again, we've done the geochemistry on the Gacharish granite, and uh, Tim's done Tim's done the uh, petrographic analysis, and it's, it's quite a fascinating one, and it is an exceedingly evolved granite in in terms of the late post-orogenic granites we see in in Egypt, it's it's you know it's, it's gone way past being a granite. It's it's really an a very well, it's gone past being an alkali granite. It's a cyanide granite or a cyanite effectively now. So, and that indicates uh, a long period of fractionation and evolution of a magma. So as the mafic as the mafic components of magmas have crystallized out, it has become more and more alkali. Mm. And these, these type of granites, they're enriched in tungsten, they're enriched in uh, rare earths, niobium, they're enriched in tin, tantalum, these sort of things. And this is the suite of granites which 
tend to be associated with intrusion intrusion related gold type mineralization yeah. and what we see here at Abu Gakharish and all the way up the contact again you can see the contact running up here you've got the green sort of metavolcanics to the east the knobbly granite to the west contact runs up here in around here we got the north Gakharish area which we did a bunch of a uh, bunch of sampling again somewhere in here there's uh there's older ancient alluvials, which again was what led us in. I can't, I can't have looked mm -hmm. at this for a couple of years. So, yeah. But there's a couple of these little waddies up here where you see these. Uh, is it in here? Anyway, I'm not going to chase around looking for them. But along the margins of these granites, you uh, we see mineralization pretty much along a five kilometers length of the granite, and it looks, you know, it looks like you know, possibly very much an intrusive related gold type target and these deposits can be very big you know they're very large and there's a deposit in egypt called sukari which sits in one of these late post uh post orogenic granites one of these pink alkali younger granites it's clearly structurally controlled uh sukari but you know what we think it's we've got here at abu gaharish is is I wouldn't say it's an analog. It's not quite the same as as, as uh, Sukari, but but it's a Sukari type target, I suppose. Yep. And the other thing is, we come up here, we come up along the edge of a granite, come around here. You can see it again. You can see it's, it's very distinctive. You can see these sort of knobbly, knobbly sort of knobbly sort of outcropping granite, and these grey things of these late dikes, which we mentioned very briefly, allude to in the press release. And that's a very late sort of fraction, fractionated phase of, of mag, magma evolution. Again, you see extending up into here, and this is in the maps which are in, in there. So we're very close there back is. here at Seven yeah. East, where we started. We're very close to the margin of of um, of the Gacharish granite. We know it's a fertile granite. We know it's associated with tungsten. It's elevated tungsten, rare earths, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Looks like a potential intrusion related we know it's got gold mineralization up the five kilometer eastern strike and it's very close to seminar east which brings us back to why why is that why is there gold and it, why is there gold in the wadis up here yeah. when we don't see anything obvious in in the bedrock now i don't know how much you know about intrusion related granites but intrusion related sort of gold mineralization peter but the classic model for IR type or reduced intrusive related gold is you tend to get these late uh, alkali evolved granites and you get these smaller stocks or apophyses which come off the main bodies. So again, zoom out. That's your main body. That's your main sort of round sort of gacharish granite in there. Yep. And you yep. get these smaller sort of stocks or you know blobs, apophyses which come off the margin of it. We see them, we see it coming up here. As I say, this one is possibly controlled. Again, I mentioned there's a north northeast trending uh, structural trend, and we see these uh, possible, you know, apophyses of these granites of uh, of the uh, Gacharish granite. Another one in here, possibly following these structures. But we believe that somewhere under the Semner East granite is an extension of the Gacharish granite. Or maybe smaller minor bosses or, or apophyses that come off it. Now again, to step back to the classic IR model, is where you get these smaller subsidiary sort of units. The IR gold mineralization often forms a carapace, a cap, over the top of these sort of things. So you will often find them as a as a potentially a blanket overlying the tops of these of these uh, stocks. So what we're postulating. Is and, and it, it is, uh, you know, it's a theory. Is that somewhere under here, and not very far down, because we see evidence of a contact uh, contact metamorphism, because we see garnets in some of these veins, which which uh, are indicative of contact metamorphism. Yeah. You can't really, you can't really see the contact met. You just 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 heard, stick with me a little bit more here, Peter. You don't, you, you don't really see the contact metamorphism of the actual basement granitoids for diorites and granite and granite diorites. But what you see is that some of these occasional veins, early quartz carbonate veins, have been metamorphosed 
and they now bear garnets. Now, that's indicative of contact metamorphism, which yeah. tells you probably within 50 or 100 metres of an of a intrusive unit under, underneath. So what we're postulating is, is it could be one of these fertile, late alkali granites associated with the uh, gold and tungsten mineralization hiding somewhere under seminary. So, and, that, and nothing to say that that granite there. could be above. Nothing to say that that it could have been above and has since been eroded and would be potentially the source of the alluvial gold at Semna East. Um, well, it's possible. It, it, it's possible, uh, but you know these things are probably fairly depth extensive. You know, okay. these things these come these things come up from below in, in, yeah. into a basement sequence, so they come from below. Again, looking at Gacharish, you can see it's a multi-phase granite. A lot of it is covered in, because of the chemistry of it, it weathers, it weathers, so you get these large sandy sort of, sandy sort of patches through it. Whereas here, in the middle, you've got a different chemi chemistry, so that one sticks up as a fairly major, um, fairly major sort of mountain within the middle of it, whereas the rest of it's fairly low-lying, so that oh. is a, that is a different phase. It's all within. It's all, it's all within the Gacharish plus on the granitoid, but it's it's a different phase. So that weathers differently because the actual mineral minerals are different in it. So, but no, I mean, if there's something there, it will be it will be underneath because that's where these things okay. are. Wonderful. Yeah. That contact is just amazing to look up along the edge of there. How long, extensive that is. It's kilometers. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's a pretty interesting, let me just flip that back, it's a pretty interesting uh, area, and, you know, there's granites like this, I, I, you know, we call them these low relief, and the fact that they're weathered out with these sandy sort of, sandy sort of wadis with these sort of granitic islands in them, yeah. and again, com coming back down to Abu Gacharish, we've been out on some of these islands, and, and you know, we've... Uh, we sampled them, and sure, there's 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 gold veins in them. And there's some pretty decent grades as well, 20, 30 grams. So, yeah. this is where we done the GPR, uh, the ground penetrating radar. So we talked about this about half an hour ago. So forgive me, we're finally getting back to it. So we've done we we we've done lines across uh, across these sort of sandy parts of the wadi, and there's noise in there. Now we don't know what's causing it, but there's a response yeah. being caused by something. It could be vein structures, it could be dikes. We don't know, but. But there's there's something there which is generating noise in the radar profiles. So it looks like something. And again, this is why we've gone back and why we've done the uh, mm. MMI sampling. So we concentrated probably about a two kilometer area through here, MMI through all these large sandy sort of patches to see if we can get some sort of geochemical handle. Oh, yeah. As you know, obviously, Peter, it's it's pretty black magic -y, uh MMI. It's good in areas of, of uh, cover, great in Canada, probably probably less good in, in most of Egypt where, you know, we got fantastic uh, fantastic exposure, except well, in places like Abu Ghraib. Well, the theory is that you know, water is a big part and oxidizing material is a big part of the signal that it gets. But, you know, there's a lot with the erosion and stuff you're seeing here, presume, who knows what you might see back at well, it, it, I mean, here's about as dry as it gets. Um, as I say, some of these terrace gravels, you know, they're thousands of years old. So, you know, they're alluvial systems, active alluvial systems, but they may only have water in them once every 10, 20, 30 years. So, so it's it's pretty dry. But MMI does work in 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 dry, arid terrains. You know, it's pretty useful in Australia. So, so. We don't know, you know, who knows whether it will show anything, whether it, whether it won't, but it, it's 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 worth a shot. And, and as I say, well, we do send these samples off, and if they do come back with something interesting, then you know we will look at uh, we will look at expanding it into other areas where it might be might potentially be useful. I know they're always really particular about what soil horizon they pick from with their MMI. And in a setting like this with no soils, I, I wonder where you'd even be taking your samples. Well, we, we took our samples from about 30, uh, 30 centimetres uh, below surface. So as you say, it's, it's very important you main, maintain a consistent uh, sampling horizon. Uh, for, for us, you know, it's basically sand. You know, <laughs> We are we are actually in Egypt, and and you know, contrary to you know, 
most people's uh, impressions and probably mine before I first went out there. I thought Egypt was all covered in sand. It's actually not. It's mostly covered in rock, at least the part where we're in. But these parts here, these sandy wadis, they are all sand. You know, you can see this. You can see these little black dots, these little sort of tumbleweedy type bushes. So there, there is vegetation within these drainage systems. So there is, there is water in there, but there's not, there's not a lot. But there's certainly no sort of organic soil profile developed. We did some, yeah. we did some uh, trial pitting actually at Hamama, Hamama West for the uh, geotechnical trial pitting for the heat leach facility, which was. You know, the first and only time we've, you know, well, it wasn't actually the only time, I tell a lie, but it was the first time where we've actually dug five or six metres down into these, into these wadis, and uh, we, had a, we had a good look at the nature of sediments in there, and as you would imagine, they're pretty chaotic, so, you know, when it, when it rains, you get a wash of sort of, you know, pretty coarse sort of material, but essentially, as I say, what we're sampling here for the MMI work, we're, we're sampling sand. <clears throat> Looking again at these um, different erosions and, and the granites, it, uh, the kind of zoomed out view that you just had us w going through there, it makes me think of like Ar Arizona Basin and Range stuff. It may just be a lack of geology, uh, global knowledge on my part, but um, yeah, I wonder any comparisons. And again, with the shallow marine environment that you've mentioned before too, and interesting stuff. Yeah, well, there, there's your contact. I mean, uh, you don't have to be a geologist to be able to pick that contact, frankly. <laughs> I reckon, I reckon, I reckon I could do it. But, uh, but um, wonderful. Yeah, I mean, these these are late granites. Uh, these this are the late the younger granite sequence again as as, as you zoom out. What we don't have is is a good handle on 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 the structure in the area. Again, if 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 we come back. Close to the San Maurice, you can see this sort of paler area again reflects a sort of altered, you know, alteration of, of the basement, uh, uh, the basement sort of orogenic granitoids. So these are what they call the grey granites, the older granites, and these ones intrusive units with into it are younger granites. Um, zoom me up, that's not very pretty. And that's another one, that's, that's for Cabamira granite, it was meant to be associated with tantalum niobium. Again, Eridia Pluton, so we're getting up to Rod Ruins in here. So again, you can see you can see the green stuff, which is which is yep. either your metavolcanic sequence, or or up here at San Luis for grey granites, the basement granites. Again, the sort of paler, sort of more altered areas. Uh, what 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 we what we're not so good at, frankly, is 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 you know having a good. Uh, we don't have a good structural handle on, on the license, how it all ties together. And what you do see is, you know, these big waddy down here up to Semna, clearly controlled by a regional lineament. Yeah. As I say, come back to here, you know, these things are orientated about 30 degrees north, northeast. Again, there's things here, you see them, we see it particularly in the clay image, the clay iron image, which I put in a press release. You can see clear sort of structures off, off, offsetting through here. And again, this regional trend through here, seven is in here, you know, all these wadis are orientated roughly parallel, you know, that is a structural fabric. When we come up to here, you know, this is, again, I mentioned this zone through here, there's what looks like a pretty major sort of thrust zone, which runs through here, wow. which has got semi carbonate along it. And if we go along, we zoom in, you can see, you know, another outcrop yep. of carbon, another one in here, another one in here. So. I mean, it seems to swing down this way. So, on this side, we got met volcanics. Up here, we're getting into a Miranda area where we start seeing, uh, you know, Rod Ruin Hamama sort of hybrid EVMS type style mineralization. But we're in the metavolcanic sequence here. South of this, we're we're in the granitoids basement. So, we've got a we 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 tend to have a good handle on individual areas where we looked at it in detail. But as I say, as we zoom out to the whole of the license area and uh, how it all fits together is is not always so obvious. And maybe someday it's a case of geophysics, um, some broad project level uh, geophysics to help add some information to tell that story. Well, what would be nice, in, like in most parts of the world, would be you know one to have access and, and the dollars to be able to fly geophysics. 
but two would be to actually have a geological survey in, in Egypt who was actually yeah. doing some of this work, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, you go over Red Sea to Saudi Arabia and a geological survey of Saudi Arabia have been doing this stuff for decades, whereas, uh, frankly, unfortunately, it hasn't happened in Egypt. So, you know, <coughs> we don't have the benefits of the, uh, you know, the, the regional work that other people in other jurisdictions have to build on. But, you know, that, that's the nature of working in sort of less developed jurisdictions, I suppose. Thank you very much for taking me through the deep dive on Semna and Abu Ghraib. Yeah, welcome, Peter. As I hope I... <laughs> I hope I didn't go a bit overboard. We talked a bit about geology and, and this press release. I, I think the point is what we've, you know, we're quite excited about Seminar East. I believe there's, you know, all the things we're seeing suggest that there's potentially a pretty attractive IR target there. It's associated with mineralization with the Gacharish granite. Now we've done the petrography. Now we now know really what sort of granite it is you know we've looked at the you know rare earth fractionation series in it we know we've got a better handle on what's going on and you know when you add that up you add that up to contact metamorphism you add that to the evidence of gold or the alluvials at surface and the fact we've actually been able to go out and and you know sample gold in areas where there doesn't seem to be any gold really outcropping that the ancient sort of mines and i think it's a pretty exciting area again yeah well done thank you no worries, Peter. Catch you later. <laughs>